I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bones Live, and it's Saturday, which means it's time for another episode of... And now it's time for another episode of Blogger's Corner with Britt. And welcome, Britt, back to the show for Blogger's Corner. How are you, Britt? I'm doing good. How about you? Very well, thank you. Um, I know we both had busy weeks. Mine, uh, for, for different reasons, not necessarily all musically involved, but that's all right. And I know you've been busy with some blogs. But uh, we're going to start off like we always do uh, with Arrow, which I feel bad because this is the second uh, time around I haven't seen it. So I apologize for that. But I know you told me that there's no Roy in this episode, so uh, <laughs> which makes it a good thing. So we'll take it from there. <laughs> okay, yes, this was much better than last week's show. No Roy. Unfortunately, we did center around the character of Laurel's sister, and we jumped back before she left for the island with Oliver and kind of seeing her home life and what Laurel's fame was like before or her sister chose to be selfish and went off with the uh, arrow. Uh, and then she's basically coming back and there is someone from Sarah's past who is trying to uh, uh, kill her, well, get her back into the League of Shadows. I think that's what it's called. But anyway, um, and so now she's got to protect her family because this person is threatening her family to lure her out. And there are a few surprises in this episode about Sarah's character. Some that made her, a, they're trying to make her very interesting, but I, I don't know if I'm completely sold on it. This char- the actress just, I don't know how to put this and I mm-hmm. want to be nice. It's just not the right fit. And so they're kind of focusing more on her character than I, I feel like there are enough characters on this show before her that we could have focused on. And I just don't know about branching her out. This seemed to be an episode to really set her up as a big character for the rest of the season. So, you know, I'm mixed feelings on that. Yeah. Uh, well, but you never know. I mean, things could change. They could uh, maybe go, well, I guess not. I guess actually a lot of the episodes are already done, so... Let's get that. Never mind. <laughs> well, I, was, I mean, I don't know. I think they might still be shooting um, for, the, for the remainder of the season, but I, I'm hoping I that people, maybe people don't feel the same way I do, which is cool, and they're enjoying her, and more power to them. I, she's just not really been my cup of tea, but she was a lot more interesting in this episode, and Felicity, not, she had a little bit of a small, she had an important part this week, but not as central as I would like her to be on the show. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a good show. It was definitely much better than last week's, and a very a big part of that was no Roy, which is a very good thing for future episodes. Well, fair enough. I was, what I was going to say before is I was like, oh, maybe they'll change it a little bit, but if they've already recorded it, then, you know, it's a chance that they haven't, but maybe they've, maybe you're right, maybe they're still shooting. So hopefully uh, uh, that could possibly change. Um, and uh, well, this week alone, I haven't got a chance to watch too much stuff. But you know, it's kind of interesting. Like I've said before, this is just gonna be a quick thing on reality TV because um, I do try to watch when I get a chance. The show called Pawn Stars, which is a pawn shop in Las Vegas, and there's another one called uh, Counting Cars. And uh, I saw one the other day, and I was like, oh, this. I actually know I might have talked about it already. But it just uh, just seems like there's more and more instances where you're just like, all right, I know this is set up, but got to make it just a little less obvious, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it can be a little frustrating sometimes. And now there's another one. Like, there's not enough because there's all these different ones called Storage Wars. So there's Storage Wars Canada. There's Storage Wars uh, U.S. Storage Wars Texas. And on and on and on. And all these different, all these different shows. And, like, it just... I just, I don't know when they're going to stop because, I mean, it's it seems like they're running out of ideas. And, yeah. I mean, this is mainly on, like, uh, uh, like A&E and stuff like that. And, like, you know, the Pawn Stars is on history just because of, obviously, all the historic stuff coming in all the time. And uh, same thing with Counting Cards because they're mostly classic cars, you know. Like, the, the other day, actually, it's kind of cool... Uh, <clears throat> The pawnstars they went to sell a convertible that was owned by Steve McQueen, mm. 
and uh this is this is not this is where it's like it's like all right this is a way to set up because he's talking before and it's like no if i don't get at least uh I think he said it was 50 because I'm not going to make any money off this and blah, 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 because they had to ship it there for the auction. And uh, I think it was in Florida. Almost positive it was in Florida. Anyways, so point being is, you know, so they start the bidding off at like 150,000. Of course, nobody bites. They drop it down to 75, nobody bites. So they go to 20, you know, and it gets to almost 50. And then uh, all of a sudden it starts going up, going up, going up. I was like, oh my God, you've made this way too obvious. So he ends up netting about uh, 80,000, 85,000. And that's pretty much what you need to make a little bit of cash. You no know, surprise, surprise there. So yeah, surprise, surprise. Yeah, and so uh, that that that's what I'm talking about. Like I said, I'm not really watching it for uh, for value. It's more content. You know, like this, like what what's the stuff that's uh, coming in, that sort of thing. And uh, one of them they brought back uh, a '69, I think it was a Dodge Roadrunner, <laughs> and a uh, cool looking car, but. Uh, not one of the best cars in the world, uh, from what they were saying. I mean, they were they were cool, like muscle cars, but they weren't exactly uh, they weren't exactly built uh, to last. We'll put it that way. Gotcha. So it's more or less of a show car. You know, take it out once in a while. Otherwise, that it's gonna sit in a garage or sit in storage, sort of thing. Very interesting. I, I do love the learning about old cars and, and new cars because that's kind of a side passion of mine. But. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. I, I've never uh, seen the show, but I hear what you're talking about with how a show will happen and then they will branch out to all these franchises like NCIS, New York, NCI, you know, all the different, every place on a, in the world has, has their own special NCIS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> NCIS, I know all other fun stuff. Okay, um, but uh, we're going to move into music news. Uh, but one thing, one more quick thing about the Super Bowl from last uh, weekend is I leaving it till now to uh, bring it up? But that aside, I was it just me or were the commercials like really bad this time around? Like they weren't that good at all. I heard that from people, and I, I watched, I or heard most of them after the Super Bowl, and they were not that good. But I did love the commercial with the little puppy. That was one of the few that I, I watched, and I loved that one. The puppy, the puppy, and the horse, the Budweiser commercial. Yes. Yep. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so sweet. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I heard I've heard that I've heard that from a lot of people, mainly females. But yeah, <laughs> no, but you know what? it was. You're right. It was a good commercial. It was well done. But the rest they weren't that funny. I mean, the Seinfeld one was just horrible. It's like this is not funny at all. Like, and I uh, wasn't a big fan of that one. And then there was like I don't know how many different Doritos commercials, and they were all eh. It's like no, this could have been a regular commercial. This was not definitely not Super Bowl worthy. We'll put it that way. Yeah, I think the hype kind of put they got they've gotten to the point where it has certainly plateaued to a certain level of what they can do uh, in terms of surprising people and I guess still telling stories in the advertising if that makes sense. So right. Budweiser is the only one who still did that. Yeah, so it was that that part of it was a little disappointing, and uh, one thing also that uh, uh, it was uh, well brought to my attention. Uh, uh, pr pretty much uh, a little bit after the Super Bowl is I don't watch Saturday Night Live at all. I haven't watched it in years because I just personally don't think it's been that good at all. But uh, my one buddy still watches it here and there and he mentioned uh, this scene. It was uh, internet radio and I think it was called uh, Paramore or Paranorma. Anyways, I'll, I, I'll get the YouTube clip and I'll, I'll post it. But uh, <clears throat> it was an internet uh, uh, radio station and they kept on losing power or losing like vocals or something. Uh, something like that. So they had to figure a way to cover it, and they were playing Green Day, and they were losing the, the Green Day vocals. Like, well, we got to find someone. And of course, they look over the corner, and there's this geeky looking guy with uh, kind of longish blonde hair and a big black room glasses, and it was Bruno Mars. <laughs> and I'm not a big fan of his music, but I was very, very impressed. They did about uh, three or four different songs, and he nailed it on the head each time. It was very impressive. Like he did best. Wow, yeah. So go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, didn't he host the, the uh, Saturday Night Live before one time? That was probably the same one. Like I said, I, I never watched it, so I didn't know about it. Okay. So uh, that, that's why. So, I mean, but like I was seeing this clip, I was blown away. I mean, that was very impressive because they did Aerosmith. They did Green Day. Um, 
there was two others, but either way, it was very impressive. He nailed on the head each time. And like like I said, I'm not a big fan of his music, and I already respected him, but I respected him so much more for that performance because that was very impressive because not too many people in his genre of music can stray from their so-called uh, stereotypical uh, uh, singing voice. You know, they may be able to that go, is very true. You no, know, they may be able, be able to go in higher pitches, that sort of thing, but they don't they don't play around too much. And like I said, I was blown away. That was very, very impressive. I was like, I couldn't believe it. It's like that's amazing. For for uh someone in his genre of music, it, it being able to do that is <laughs> like like I said, I gained a whole new respect for him after seeing that. Yeah, I remember hearing that clip. I was very, very impressed. He's very, very talented and very multiversatile as an artist. That's right. So you know, I really, man, uh, hats off to Bruno Mars because that was that was beyond impressive. So I was, uh, like I said, gained a whole new respect for him for that. Um, next up, just a few uh, little things. Uh, Imagine Dragons is doing their arena tour right now, and they're covering a Rush song uh, called "Intimidating," which, uh, just like most people, you're always a little leery of a cover because you don't know how it's going to turn out. You no, know, it's either it's either they do just to the song or they butcher it. So I'm hoping at some point there'll be uh, <clears throat> clips or a video footage of that floating around on YouTube somewhere because I'd be interested to see how they do it. And some uh, somewhat funny news tied in with uh, actually Super Bowl news f uh, from Wispan as well is uh, people have been saying that uh, Chad Smith from the Red Chili Peppers, he's their drummer, looks a lot like Will Ferrell. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and the, and there's a there's a quote as a, a, a joking uh, title for the article, and it says Chili, Chili Peppers Chad Smith to Will Ferrell, stop impersonating me. <laughs> And this is courtesy of the the Rolling Stones. So they're talking about that, and they said they've been doing stuff on uh, on Instagram. And and Will Ferrell was saying, I know it's so nice to be able to uh, come out and say, yes, he's the drummer for the Chili Peppers. And, <laughs> and so oh, that was uh, interesting to hear. And because uh, like now that I think about it, it makes sense. But uh, apparently it's been going on for a few weeks. I just noticed it now. So awesome with that. But uh, Tony the Red Chili Peppers is their performance on uh, the Super Bowl was uh, pre-recorded, and uh, a lot of people were cheesed about that because I mean, with some of the solo artists, you kind of expect it just because you no, know, they're dancing, they're moving around, and you know, it's it's easier for someone like that to have their pre-recorded. And most time, the shows are, but there's sometimes they're not, so it's kind of it's. Uh, it's like I said with a pop artist, I kind of expect it, so it just really doesn't really bother me too much. But with a band like that, I thought you know at least they'd be plugged in because it was mentioned that uh, uh, Flea, the bassist, wasn't plugged into his amp, so people started pointing that out. And then uh, Flea actually put out a letter saying you know what, uh, it was something uh, we had to do because they don't have a lot of time to set up the Super Bowl and, and it made things easier. Blah blah. It's like you know what, like it doesn't take that much to set up. I mean like I mean I've seen and like. Like the background uh, of, of basically different shows and stages being sh set up, I know a lot of work goes into it. But he was saying, you know, that there could be uh, there could be problems that arise, and no, no, and you know, most of these guys they're used to setting up the stages very quickly. I mean, that's that's essentially what their job is. So, I thought I thought it was a bit of a weak excuse, but you know what? I'm not them, so I just uh, like I said, just like really, that's all you got. But I was like, okay, fine. You know what? I'm not them. I don't know how this works. I haven't done it myself firsthand, so I'll take your word for it. Uh, well, I, go ahead. Oh, oh I was just going to say that I understand. I, I heard the, some of the argument on TV and stuff, and I understand that. I think, however, in all fairness to viewers, they should have put up a you know a little thing scribed on the bottom saying this has been this performance has been pre-recorded. Just to be honest and upfront with people, because I think if you're just honest with people and say that it's been pre-recorded, they're not going to be as upset as if they think they've watched something live and then they learn that it's not been the case. Well, exactly. I mean, I'm a big Toy Peppers fan. I have seen them live before, and I can understand this was a Super Bowl performance. But yeah, it would have been nice to see something like that. Um, uh, a few other things. Uh, this one is interesting. Uh, can't wait to see how much this is going to fetch for. But uh, the Beatles autograph wall from the Ed Sullivan show is going to be headed uh, for auction in April. And right now, it's expected to fetch $800,000. Wow. So it'll probably get more, but uh, it's signed top to bottom by all four of them. And, uh, you know, a couple of places here and there, it says, it's, it's, uh, it says the Beatles were here. <laughs> <laughs> But most of them have like a funny little, uh, uh, basically, uh, little sentence text them. They actually didn't show that in the detail. I'm hoping that'll pop up soon, but I'd be curious to know what they say. 
And uh, that uh, that being said, the Beatles, uh, there are some pictures that uh, are floating around online, and I have them too. I have them saved. I should post them later. They're just funny Beatles photos, and this is uh, it's pretty much from uh, their their heyday, you know. And these are uh, mainly like uh, at uh, press conferences, that sort of thing. And I think one of the funny funniest ones for me, like I said, I'll post this in a little bit. It's uh, John and Paul are sitting at, at the at the press conference table, and <clears throat> the question is: Is uh, one of the reporters asked? He said, uh, "Do you think Ringo is the best drummer in the world?" To which John responds, "He's not even the best drummer in the Beatles." So <laughs> I, I I I start I start laughing, and uh, the other good one was they're all sitting together, and uh, they uh, they asked John. They said. Uh, uh, what's uh what's your type of woman and he says my wife and they go to george george what what's your type of woman john's wife <laughs> <laughs> so there, there there's some really really funny ones and there's about four or five of them but there's those little things but just uh you can just you can just picture them saying it and you know just make you kind of laugh that much more so uh yes. yeah uh next up uh for uh all the NBA fans, uh, Pharrell Williams and Kendrick Lamar will be performing at the All-Stars game. So if you're digging that stuff, and or at least you want to see them, you can uh, tune in because it'll be obviously at halftime. And uh, actually, another Super Bowl thing involving Chili Peppers is Chad Smith is actually auctioning his drums off from the performance uh, for charity. Hmm, that's nice. And the last few things I have here is uh, for all the Cure fans, which I'm a huge Cure fan, and they've been around forever. Uh, they are uh, releasing a new uh, album in the next few months, and it was recorded at the same time as their previous album, which was released in 2008, 416 Dream. This one's going to be called 414. They'll be out in the next few months, and I'm really looking forward to it because uh, uh, The Cure is just one of those uh, bands that kind of uh, experimented a lot and did a lot for did a lot for music, so uh, be sure to check it out. And they're, Obviously, their older albums are better, but the new ones are still good. And best album for me is Disintegration. So if you like The Cure, if you like The Cure, check out Disintegration because it's probably their best album by far. Uh, the other things are um, there will be a compilation CD as a tribute to Ronnie James Dio featuring Metallica, Tenacious D, and Anthrax. And our old buddy Bieber is uh, back in the news again. Now it says he may be facing felony charges for the egging. Hmm. So uh, this should be interesting, and of course they're trying to say, well, no, because it doesn't have a lot to do with this. And that was around the same time they arrested his rapper friend. I don't remember his name was arrested for a coke possession. And uh, Bieber, yeah. Bieber just seems to be all new and all over the news, and just getting into more and more trouble. And uh, like we said before, you know, it's all the times they'll start to say, well, no, any press is good press. In this case, it's really bad, especially when there's a petition floating around saying, do we want to deport Bieber from the U.S. Right? So. <laughs> yes, things are not going well for Bieber. I have to honestly say, I'm kind of surprised that things went in this direction. I am, and then I, I guess I'm not, but it kind of reminds me of Lindsay Lohan. I thought that after his arrest, it would be a bottoming out of sorts for him, and that he would start to, he would go to rehab and get people to feel like he's making this comeback and that he's learned his lesson, but no, he's just adding more stuff to the pile. I don't think he, anything is really getting through to him at all. Well, I mean, it's just, what are you going to do? I mean, I mean, there's actually a, a, a thing that's uh, seen on uh, people's Facebook, uh, uh, Canadian friends, and then Something it said something to, about Bieber saying that we don't take back broken singers or broke or broken stars. <laughs> so, well, no, we we don't we don't want them as much as the U.S. doesn't want them. Yeah. Right. So we'll have to send them to Antarctica. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or or Australia, where the where the British used to send their their uh, their prisoners way back when. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bless their hearts. But I don't know it just it's you know it's it's kind of it's it's funny just because I mean a lot of a lot of the we'll call it the singing talent comes out of Canada isn't always the best and I totally agree and I know I'm on board with a lot of them like you know I know a lot of people disagree with me but uh, Celine Dion I'm not a fan at all I just I think she's just way too pretentious and obnoxious so I just like I have no respect for her whatsoever and the same thing with uh, Brian Adams and uh, so there's there's a there's a few uh, stars out here that. Uh, uh, people on both sides aren't uh, very impressed with 
and as ironic where like uh, this is years ago mind you but on uh <clears throat> on uh well in a movie that south park made they they said uh well what about the u.s was talking to canada said well what about brian adams like like now now it goes the canadian government has apologized many times for brian adams so <laughs> <laughs> well, i man i didn't realize there was such an anti-brian adams sentiment out there i actually love him <laughs> Or at least his work. I don't know well, in, much I, about him otherwise. Well, I, I think in some cases he just one of those one of those uh, um, pop stars. We're going to call it that. Either either like him or you don't. There's like no. Oh, okay. It doesn't seem like there's any. Too, there's too many in between. So, I mean, we've produced other uh, decent bands out of here, and uh, but the, one of the funniest ones actually is my buddy was showing me this, and because uh, uh, over the past I guess like five years, like people have just more and more started disliking Nickelback. And uh, there's there's a there's a fa- there's a, p- a fan page now uh, for uh, for people who don't like Nickelback, so they'll post comments and uh, videos are on YouTube and that sort of thing. And there's one you feel bad, but it was kind of funny at the same time. I mean, it's kind of uh, it's kind of uh, I won't say bad, but how a lot of times we laugh at other people's like we'll call it misfortunes, like little injuries, like whether it's a movie or it's real life or it's like a video online, and. Uh, Nickelback was playing and they weren't uh, really getting a, a good response. So Chad Kroger stopped, uh, Kroger stopped the song and says, goes, do you want to rock and roll or uh, you guys want to rock and roll or do you want us to walk off? And after he said that a bottle came up and hit him in the head. Oh my God. Yeah. So the, I, the people in Portugal apparently weren't too happy with them. So Yikes. I'm not condoning, oh. I'm not condoning throwing stuff at the stage because that's ridiculous because you pay all that money. I mean, this is a big festival, but so you don't pay all that money and then toss uh, stuff up at the performers. I mean, that's, that's really out of line and very rude. And I don't condone that at all. And it's nice that I uh, like, like at least now more and more bands are starting to stand up and they're having these people ejected from the, from the concerts. And it's happened a bunch of times and good for them because, you know, you don't go up there to be pelted with, uh, who knows what. Yeah, that is just so rude and so inappropriate, and I don't, uh, well, it's just so dehumanizing, and it's so, like you said, it's just inappropriate. I uh, know that some concerts that I've gone to, they don't let you have bottles simply for that point that people get rowdy and they start throwing things. I just don't really understand the mindset of a person who would do that. They, a, A person who's up there performing at a concert is not trying to do you any harm they haven't thrown anything at you and i don't understand why you would feel vindicated to do something so um just so mean i guess that's the only way i can put it just mean well you know and that's right uh there's uh not uh probably about i don't know a few years ago uh uh there was a foo fighters concert and that was happening and uh dave Grohl pretty much po- uh, pointed the guy out and stopped the concert and said all right because we're not continuing until this guy's gone. So security went and took him through him out. Yeah, good for him. So, and the same thing happened, uh, uh, actually, this is probably around the same time period, but this was, I think it was in, in the Netherlands, and the Queens of Stone Age was playing a show. And, you no, know, there's a guy uh, um, being, we'll call it a jerk, in the crowd. And, uh, you know, he, uh, after one of the songs, like, he says, you know what? Because I got a got a huge fever and I came out to play for you guys, not for this uh, a hole right here. So they pretty much uh, singled them out and had the security toss them out. Yeah, well, good for them. Yeah, it shouldn't be tolerated, and the band shouldn't even have to say anything. Ushers who are so um, how do I put this? Um, I guess they'd say militaristic about everything going on in, inside the place when you're getting your ticket and everything. Don't show the same amount of concern if they see someone throwing bottles or being rude to get them ejected i and i just really don't understand that at all you know what well you know what? and i totally agree and uh there's there's one uh there's actually another uh, incident involving uh queen of the stone age at because uh, that was an outdoor performance and uh this this was a, an arena performance and uh of course you know uh like a lot of bands i've interviewed the bands on stage can see a lot more than people think they can because they're higher up and they have a higher vantage point. So they know it's a lot more than people think. And uh, there was this one guy, again, being a bit of a douche. And uh, he, uh, he, uh, he uh, pretty much he finished the song up and stopped. And then instead you point him out. And pretty much the house, like, almost came a spotlight came up on, the, on this kid. Eh? And uh, pretty much uh, 
uh, not something I can say on the air and feel comfortable saying. It's uh, it just it just it just vulgar. It's not uh, anything more than that. So uh, he point him out and call him a certain name, and then told the crowd when he was being pulled out by security to, to say, "Hey, blah blah, blah eat, eat a bag of blah blah blah." And like I'll tell you this when we're off the air because, like I said, I just a little a little too uh, graphic for this time of day. <laughs> so <laughs> so, but it was it was it was funny. But you know, like good for them for doing it. And that is going to be wrapping. Actually, one last thing before I forget. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Miley Cyrus is back in the news again. Surprise, surprise, because of a spreadsheet in a magazine called V. And it's pretty provocative, but you know what? Whatever. She's she's 21. You know, she's doing this and it's to get attention. So, you know what? Whatever I, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm done. With, I'm done with all this stuff. It's like I just, I just really don't care anymore. So yeah, it's all, it's all just fake, full controversy to get her name in the news. You know what? Show us that you have something, uh, some talent, and then we'll start talking to, about that. But I don't see fake publicity stunts needing to get any more attention than they're already going to get. That's exactly it. So that's going to wrap up uh, Rock News. So, Britt, let's get into your blogs of the week. Okay. Well, the first thing I had was the the Olympics are going on. They started um, – they actually started the day before the opening ceremonies, but the opening ceremonies were last night. It got me thinking about 20 years ago, the most amazing, epic skating rivalry of all time. I think we all kind of remember where we were when we heard the infamous – why, why, why? Tell you, of course, about the Nancy <laughs> Kerrigan, <laughs> Tanya Harding rivalry <laughs> that culminated. I love her yet. I came home, turned on the TV, and there's Nancy Kerrigan crying, holding her leg, and all the drama that ensued. It just made such an indelible impression on anybody who just thinks about the skate, uh, figure skating. I recently watched a documentary called, um, I think it was called The Price of Gold. It was part of the 30 for 30 series on ESPN, and they basically broke down uh, all of the angles and about Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan, and I just thought, this would make the most amazing movie, and I cannot believe it hasn't been done. So (laughs) my post is a plea to make this happen. (laughs) (laughs) Um. I, of course, fielding casting ideas, but I definitely think Amy Adams would make an amazing Tanya Harding. Um, yeah, I just, do you remember when this all happened? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it was, it was huge. I mean, of course, uh, you know, the, <clears throat> there was a starting live skit that in, in fall of it too, and all the parodies and everything else. Yeah, I just really got caught up in the whole, for me, I always felt Bad, bad for I felt like Tanya Harding got a bad rap, and I'm just gonna say that right now. I, there was she was never charged with having actually planned the attack. She acknowledged she knew about it afterwards. I think when you hear the story from in her own words, it's sad for me that someone who hasn't even been criminally prosecuted is now everyone just assumes she's guilty and she's had to carry the weight of a public conviction for 20 years for something that. She never, I mean, if the, the case was so clear and we're all saying that she's guilty, why weren't there any criminal charges brought? So I would like a movie to kind of take us into all the, you know, side angles that make this really amazing, compelling female sports story, I think, really just memorable. Well, well fair enough. That makes sense. I mean, but it's just one of those things, you know, that uh, people love to hate her and you know, make uh, just the stuff comes all goes all around with all the propaganda and everything else. It just it, it's a lot of times it's just a, a question of stuff being blown way out of proportion, which happens so much in the media. So it's it it sucks, but you come to expect it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sadly, we I think we've all kind of gotten used to the public circus of people being held, uh, just people making judgments about stuff that we really will never know the answer to. And I'd like to err more on the side of. Uh, well, just giving her the benefit of the doubt, if you will. No, fair enough. And uh, you're right. I'm excited to see, obviously, the hockey. So I've got I got the app on my phone. So uh, pretty much most of the games are going to start at seven because uh, Russia is nine hours ahead. So yeah. which kind of sucks because I'm at work at seven o'clock. Luckily, my breaks around seven, so I'll be able to watch the first period at the very least. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but uh, otherwise, an app. Uh, uh, otherwise, an app. Otherwise, in that. <laughs> 
I have the app for the Olympics and it's nice because I had that watch I told you about. So at least I can see the score on my watch without pulling my phone out like every few minutes, which I'm not exactly allowed to do. So <laughs> That is very cool. Did you see the um, opening ceremonies last night? Uh, actually, I did not. I was crashed really early. I had a long day of work. So I was on the couch for probably about maybe an hour and I fell asleep. So I did miss them. Yeah, I take them. Uh, and the best way to handle anything with the Olympics, I'm finding, is just DVR, DVR. And uh, it was really, it was really a beautiful opening ceremony. And there was one thing that just really stuck out. I um, did ballet when I was growing up, and so it was very cool to see the Russian ballerinas perform. And it was just really, it was a really beautiful opening ceremony. And they had all these projectors making these 3D images. It was, it was very visually stunning. I was very impressed. Oh, right on. And, you know, uh, I'm not a huge fan of ballet at all, really. But um, from what I've heard, uh, Russia has some of the best ballerinas in the world. So I'm, I'm sure it was quite a spectacle to see. Oh, yeah, it was. I mean, when you're doing ballet when you're growing up, everyone talks about the Russian ballet. And that is all everything you're striving for is to be on the, or attempt to be on their level at something that's very, very difficult, if not impossible. And uh, so it was very cool to get to see them on their own stage uh, of doing this for the whole world. So it was very moving, I have to say. Well, uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to look at it tonight because I got a few things going on. That's why New Music Saturday won't be until 11 p.m. tonight. I do apologize, but I have prior commitments that I need to attend to uh, in the meantime. So rather than do it super early, I'm going to do it much later. Um, yeah, with the Olympics, it's always it's always a fun time. The thing that it's been floating around online and on Facebook and on the news and yada yada yada, but it's stuff that's been going on for a month and people are almost seeming just to realize oh, that's happening now. Like just the conditions of some hotels in Russia and like you know the the the, the toilets side by side. It's like you know this is a foreign country. It's not like the first time that a lot of them have been in Russia for some sort of competition, whether it was like uh, figure skating and that sort of thing. You know, so I mean. You gotta remember too that Russia is not exactly a rich country, so you know, <clears throat> you know, just be thankful that you're actually at the Olympics and kind of see past that. It may it may suck, but it's only for what about two three weeks. Yeah, it is. It's about sixteen days. I, I I really did feel bad for them, and it, come, it'd be like going to someone else's house and them not having the amenities that you have, and you posting pictures online and making fun of them. Does that make you look like a very big person when you do that? No, it's very, very petty is what it makes you look like. So Yeah, so just be grateful that you're at the Olympics, like you said, and just um, lay off. I, I don't agree with everything going on politically in Russia, but, right. you know, just shows that's uh, ha judging all the people who live there and uh, sorry, throwing them all in that same thing is just really not appropriate, I don't think. And Ooh. like I just said, I, I just think they're trying really hard and they are not, like you pointed out, very economically enriched. So this is just a really big opportunity for them. And I think that every, they should be applauded for what they've been able to do so far. Well, that's right. And not everywhere is going to be like home. I mean, that's a reality. I mean, these are these are different foreign countries you're going to. you got to expect it that not everywhere is going to be completely up to date with everything. And it happens. I mean, I I think it was Greece 20 years ago this summer. It was horrible, but they still did it, and they still had a good time when they came out of it. So, like, you know. I totally agree with you. It's, it's like, it's like uh, kids going to summer camp. Oh, I didn't want to go. Nah, nah, nah. I didn't want to leave. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I, I hope the sentiment turns that way because I, I just wanted to, like, I felt so bad for last night there during the opening ceremony. They were did this really beautiful thing with having the snowflakes turn into the Olympic rings and connect in the air on uh, these beautiful. Just it was really beautiful, and then one of the rings didn't light up for them, and oh. people were making fun. Of, and I was like, wow, really? That's a technical difficulty. I'm sure the person that was not intended. Just give them a break. Yeah, no kidding. It, that, that that's that's the thing is it may be generalizing a little bit but uh well i don't not not we'll say we'll say some people uh like to kind of point out uh, all all the follies of some of something somebody else's work meanwhile it's like well you may be making fun of it but uh can you put that together you know like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I sure can't i i wouldn't be able to put something that like that together no way Absolutely. That's a very, very good point. So, you know, unless you've been there and you've been getting the Olympic rings ready, why don't you just, you know, sit on the couch and just kind of shush? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Uh, just kind of shush. Yeah, but just kind of shush. <laughs> don't, don't make me repeat myself, you know. <laughs>
Exactly. Yes, we're going to turn this uh, boat around. Yeah. <laughs> I, you, yeah. know, you always gotta you always gotta love that you think back always the, the empty thread if you don't stop I'm gonna turn this car around <laughs> hey my, my my dad did do that oh so, really <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, did, he didn't play and I really appreciated that like he meant business so <laughs> <laughs> yeah shout out to dad love you <laughs> he's listening now oh really um, so yeah, so the rest of the blogs this week, I, I did uh, wrote down all of the new movie releases for February, and this week, uh, Vampire Academy is coming out, and I'm uh, this little independent movie called The Pretty One, so it's pretty interesting. I don't know how good the vampire movie will be, but the trailer looked okay. And then Jay Leno signed off this week, and this is another situation where people are pouncing on this man, and I guess it goes back to the Letterman situation. The Conan O'Brien situation. Right. I'm pro Leno. I'm just gonna put that out there. <laughs> and uh, so I just kind of wanted to take a moment to just defend him. Entertainment Weekly published an article called "Big Jaw versus the World." <laughs> I was like, really? The man? We all know that the man has a predominant chin, and he's been self-effacing about it. Why would you make a crass comment about his physical shortcomings? Like, let's stay to the journalistic integrity of whatever that it is you're trying to say. <laughs> no, fair enough. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, I just, like, I don't mind Leno. I just didn't always think he was that funny. But, like, I mean, but that's got nothing to do with his facial features at all. I just... <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, sure, if you don't think he's funny and he's not your cup of tea, I, I, yeah, absolutely. But it was just, like, people making comments out of Jay stole The Tonight Show, making out to be this Machiavellian villain of late night. And I was like, really? <laughs> I mean, let's get a few. As my point of the article is just kind of put a few facts straight. For instance, like Conan O'Brien, when he took over the Tonight Show, his ratings uh, fell massively, and that's the reason Jay Leno was asked back, not because Jay Leno was like, "Hey, you know, I'm not really enjoying my the Leno Show. Can I get back on the Tonight Show?" It wasn't like that, and yeah. that's like I, it was just not like that at all. No, I know. I mean, but obviously, people are quick to jump and quick to say something, right? So. Yeah, he'll be laughing with his millions. So well, that's that, that, that's what it comes down to too. Though. We may talk about these people at the same time too. Is we're we're not we're not making the millions they are. So it's kind of kind of one for the other. It's it's you know it's good to talk about to see what they're doing, what they're up to, and you know how we may think they can improve. But it's what it comes down to is they're making the millions and we're not. But what are you going to do? <laughs> Very true, and I applaud him. I hope he enjoys his um, time away from the light. And then the final thing that I did this week was. Actor Philip Seymour Hoffman passed away on Sunday. Yep. I was very sad about that. Um, so I wrote, I, I, I just wrote about about him. I just one of my favorite actors of all time. I was just very sad to hear about his passing and just losing uh, another person lost to uh, the battling the disease of addiction. So I just it was it was really sad. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. You know, it's be I guess people well. What's the right word for this? I think people would accept the the loss more if it had been like accidental or something like that. But when it comes to something like that, you know, people are sad that it happens, but they tend to get a little less sympathy because uh, just because of the dr drug addiction. I mean, obviously, a lot of uh, unfortunately, comedians actors have gone that way, and it, and it does suck. But and it's just one of those things that I mean, <clears throat> uh, it's depending on the actor, comedian, what have you. A lot of times you're supposed to be on and they, they feel that they need these drugs to keep them on all the time. And people like Chris Farley, who was really, really funny. Uh, John Belushi, again, the same thing. I mean, they're really funny actors, uh, actor comedians, but, you know, they're just one of those things they felt always need to be on. So they kind of turned uh, and stayed on the drugs and that's eventually was their end, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it is it is really sad. I, I don't know what particularly led Mr. Hoffman to his addiction. I, I do think... The disease of addiction is something that finds you more than uh, maybe finding it. And some people win and some people lose. My, my grandfather was a talent agent, and he had a, a mate. He had a, a client who was just amazingly gifted, and he battled, and he ultimately lost his disease to the disease of addiction. It was just so sad. He tried everything to try to save that person, but there was an immense talent. But it was just. Um, it was, it was just not really a battle that some people can win. And I just hope that people can find some compassion that that's really kind of how it goes down to. 
that is like someone else having any kind of, kind of disease. Some people are able to make it to the other side, and some people just can't. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, it's uh, obviously uh, uh, a lot of it's uh, the quote unquote addictive personality, which makes it that much harder to give it up. So, I mean, it's yeah, it's both it's both it's both addiction and mental. You know, it's it's a mix of the both, which obviously makes it that much more dangerous because you know. The physical addiction sometimes is a lot easier to get over than the mental addiction. Mm. I mean, I'm not I'm not speaking from experience for myself. I mean, just what I've heard in some of these shows too. So, um, uh, I, I will never experience it, uh, thankfully. But it just it's one of those things. It's 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 hard to get over no matter what it is. There's because there's both I said mental and physical addiction, and a lot of times the physical addiction is a lot easier to break than the mental addiction because even though I uh, would say that there's drugs that completely around your system, you know. And it's been two weeks, you know, in your head, you may be thinking like, you know what, that'll be really cool right now, or it'd be fun to do it before I do this, or this, that, and the other thing. So, and, you know, it's, that's part of, that's, that's unfortunately part of the problem for the addiction is all the excuses that are made to keep doing it as opposed to giving it up. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think there's some people who have a, a like, physical, and the people with a mental, and sometimes it's a breed of both. Um, I think to myself... Like if someone get has a habit of brushing their teeth, and sometimes that can I knew someone who had an addiction to brushing their teeth, and it got really like you know you, you can really mess yourself up. That it starts is an okay thing, and then through time it kind of erodes into something out of control. Right. No, fair enough. But uh, uh, what's uh, um, I guess step off this kind of we'll call it somber sad stuff, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, Next week, we'll uh, be talking about the Olympics. Obviously, that'll be kind of an ongoing theme. We'll spend a few minutes on that uh, each week until they're, until they're done. So, about medal winners and if we've actually seen the competitions, what we thought of it. So, I'll, I won't be watching just hockey, just so everybody knows. So, I'll be talking about more than that. So, I don't want to be completely one-sided to one uh, one particular sport. And uh, next Saturday, um, we'll be back for Bloggers Corner and at 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern that night. We'll be debuting the new Wild Young Hearts album, so you want to tune in for that for sure. So uh, until next time, Brett, obviously, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. And we'll be doing this again next Saturday with more interesting stuff. And I, I promise I have more time this week, and I will watch Arrow, so I'll be able to throw my two cents in because I have a little bit of catch-up to do. So. <laughs> well, I look forward to hearing what you have to say about this past week and next week's episode. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I'll have pretty much have a mouthful for you. So... <laughs> All right. So until next time, this has been Dr. Bones and Britt for Bloggers Corner. We'll talk to you next Saturday at 3 p.m. And tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern will be another new episode of New Music Saturday. So tune in for that. Till then, thanks so much for listening. Bones out.